In today's video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to provision access cards to user profiles and also how to install and utilize the Vercada Pass app. But before you do so, for those of you who are quite new to access control, I wanted to uh, give you a few ideas about card formats and what they are. And in a simple way of looking at this, card formats are very similar to the formats of a bank card. For those of you who are not aware, if you buy an American Express card, it actually has a different digit length than Visa or MasterCard. So if you are uh, trying to type it in on a website that does not accept Amex, you will either get an error or the whole form will not allow you to submit. In a nutshell and overly simplified, this is how card formats work. So if your system does not accept that particular format, well, you need to be looking at alternative ways to get in. For Vercada Access Control, if you are interested to see if your card format is supported, all you need to do is go on a help website and you'll actually see an up-to-date list. You'll have two columns because one of them denotes if the card format is supported by the controller itself, while the other shows you if the AD reader can also read it because certain card formats, like for example an HIDI class, would require you to use a specialized reader and its Wigand interface. Now at this point you might be wondering, oh, what kind of card format do I use? If you have a good grasp of your access control implementation and have ordered cards before, you might find the answer in the confirmation email, in some of the paperwork, and even on the box that the cards came into. In my case, my four-year-old decided to stick a Vercada guest sticker on top of it and I actually do not have any idea what these are. And this is where Vercada readers, that's the AD series, allows you to scan the card and understand if that is something recognized by the system. So all you need to do is go in within the profile of the new user that you've defined, scroll down to credentials, add the new card, and at this point, you know that you don't have the right information to proceed. Nothing to worry about. You just click scan card, define the door where the Vercada reader is placed into, click select, and then scan. You'll have 15 seconds to scan your card, and voila, it is a standard 26 bit Wigand. And that is both the facility code and the card number. I also wanted to make a point that you shouldn't be confusing Wigand, as in the card format called Wigand, with Wigand, the interface that readers and access controllers communicate. They are two separate things. Remember, Vercada can accept any third party reader that's based on Wigand, or Vercada's own AD series, which is based on OSDP which is the protocol that superseded it. Previously, I have made a video about Wigand versus OSDP. So if uh, you're interested to explore the topic in further detail, I'm going to leave a link here so you can check it out. Going back to command, I will verify that the user is part of a group I called home and that at this point it has access to not only the door we use to scan the card, but also the previous doors defined on my old AC41 that I have replaced recently. You see that as I click on the door, the door is currently marked as locked. I can double check that home access is one of the access levels tied to that particular door and the schedule itself is access controlled. Okay, it worked and you can actually see that it took just about a second for command to populate that particular event. Let's do that again and I'm going to try with another card that's not assigned to a profile. It's red, so I cannot enter that particular area. Hopefully you know the answer by now of how many seconds this door will remain open and you'll actually see the lock being triggered as well. Remember that's something that you define in within the installer settings and it's currently set at 10 seconds. So that kind of sums up cards. We have a big list that is available online. It's updated 
uh, quite frequently. So I suggest uh, you check it out depending on when you watch this video. Just type in Vercada card formats access control and you'll actually get a list of them. And if you do not possess access control cards, you can actually order some from Vercada. There are two flavors. The one that I just use here, the 26-bit Wigand, is the most uh, cost-effective one. Is a low-frequency card and the communication between it and the reader is not encrypted. So if you are running a more secure environment, I actually suggest spending just a bit more money uh, to get the Vercada Desfire EV3 encrypted cards. They are high frequency and that means that people won't be able to snoop on the conversation just by using a device bot online and replicate that card. Again, you're buying cards from Vercada, buy the Desfire EV3 ones. But leaving cards aside, let's also think about more of the new generation way of getting into a building. And this is where I'm going to grab a uh, just regular tablet that has Bluetooth functionality. And I'll show you how easy it is to enable remote access and Bluetooth unlock on it. Going back in the user profile, I'm going to scroll down to remote and Bluetooth unlock. They are grayed out because in within the profile itself, I did not set an email address. Once that's done, I can invite the user for remote and Bluetooth unlock. And I'll also send an invite that will get the cloud to generate uh, an email with instructions. What the user gets is two emails. One of them says, please verify your email address in command. Click verify email. The second email gives me links for both iOS and Android that will point me to the App Store where I can actually download Vercada Pass, which is available free of charge. Once I'm in the app, I just need to type in my email address and the app will actually send me a hot link that will allow me to log in without the use of a password. Once I'm in, the app asks me to allow it to use Bluetooth. Um, please make sure you tell the users to do so because if not, guess what? Bluetooth unlock will not work. Click OK. Allow it for the location. I'm going to come back to, to this a bit later. And also notifications just in case you want to know that you need to log back into the app. And as you can see, all I need to do is get the tablet close to the reader. It flashes green, the relay changes state, and now the door is open. You also see here in the app that I am presented with multiple doors. And this is how remote unlock works because I'm able to just click on this button and make the door open. And although I have a visual confirmation on the reader itself, remote unlock is just a way that the software tells the cloud to open the door. So in theory, you don't actually even need a reader attached. But remember, if the internet is down, you're actually not be able to use remote unlock to enter any areas. Going back to command, I see that uh, some of the events started uh, generating. And at any point, I can also hit this button here to remotely unlock the door. So this is again the same as a remote unlock for a user, but from an admin perspective that actually has access to command and is able to unlock doors no matter whereabouts they might be.